Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Kanye here, and welcome to my blind reaction to The Owl House Season 2, Episode 10. So, first off, you could see I'm in my room. Um, simply put, circumstances are a little different this week, so I have to be in here for this reaction. Um, and it, it's just a way to not bother others as much. <laughs> um... But another thing is that this is apparently the mid-season finale, and after this is going to be a hiatus for a currently indeterminate amount of time. There's no word on when the series is coming back for the second half of the season yet. But yeah. Um, so we're kind of ending off the first half of season two, hopefully on a bang. And a lot of people in the fandom are really stressing out over this and everything. Uh, my biggest thing going into this was, is this hiatus even real? Because I, I had heard pretty much nothing about it until just like a week, week and a half ago, where I started hearing about it on social media. And it, it caught me completely off guard because I had heard nothing about it anywhere. And afterwards, I, I was trying to look for any kind of official confirmation and was having a lot of trouble finding anything. But apparently this is real from uh, what I could find out. Um, it, it seems that this is. And so, yeah, obviously there won't be any Owl House in this slot for a little bit going forward. So I will be replacing it with another donation award but I'll get to that in the afterthoughts uh, for now um, so far this season has been hit after hit after hit just the constant stream of important and really damn good episodes so it makes me wonder if, if, if with this being the mid-season finale how are they going to top any of this? What are they going to do? How intense is this going to be? I'm, I'm really wondering how they're going to leave us off for months, probably. Um, I know nothing going into this. I don't know the title. I don't know the synopsis. I don't know anything about this episode, so... I have no even guesses as to what they're going to do. But based on what we've gotten, based on the fact that even if the key was cracked, there is still some blood in it, Hunter has given that to Bellos, I presume. And so we might have a case where shit does really go down. Like they might not be waiting until the finale of the season to bring that shit up. Which, if that's the case, that's going to be interesting. Um, but we should just check it out and see for ourselves what this final episode of the first half of Season 2 has in store for us. So, when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. This after fades to black, then fades back in. Everything for that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So... This was a very good mid-season finale, and it did pretty much everything I feel a mid-season finale should. But I need to talk about something. 
um, that, that is very much involved with this, that is very important to the episode and everything, but kind of like, it, it, it's, it's something that happened outside of it and everything. So, a few days back on Twitter, I had seen a post talking about Camila, and apparently there were people who were saying that Camila was abusive towards Luz, based on the information we had. And there are a couple people who I was following at the time who were saying, like, these people shouldn't be saying that. I decided to chip in on the argument myself and give my personal thoughts. And I sided with the idea that Camila is abusive. Based on the information we had at the time, um, and, and based on my own personal uh, connections with a lot of that, in, including very similar um, things that were done, I came to the conclusion that, yeah, to a degree she was. And I defended that position when everyone came after me for it, it seemed. Um, except, like, maybe one or two people, uh, like, had affirming agreement to it. And, but everyone was coming after me, and I really hammered in that I believe this. And after... A couple days of thinking and everything, um, I had watched the episodes that Camila appeared in again, and I realized that I was, I was projecting a bit. That while Camila's actions weren't necessarily the best, which this episode does actually kind of briefly acknowledge, she definitely was not abusive in that. Um, I, I was definitely projecting. I was definitely uh, viewing it through my own lens. And so I made kind of like this apology tweet thread on Twitter um, explaining that I was wrong and thanking people for calling me out on being wrong. Um, but my entire reasoning and everything was because of Camila sending Luz to this reform camp, wanting her to change who she is on a fundamental level and everything, stuff like that. And there was a lot that I was refusing to see regarding the situation, e even with like the fact that Luz clearly enacted dangerous things at the school. I, I was still refusing to see a lot of it. Um, just because, again, of my own experiences, seeing things through my lens. And especially after seeing this episode, I can safely say I was very wrong. Camila, without question, is a loving mother. And it, without question, she supports Luz's weirdness. Was the way she handled it the best? No. I still stand by that she could have handled it better. It, it would have been better and it would have been just altogether healthier for her to sit down with Luz, talk to her about things, and learn to channel her creativity and weirdness through a more uh, constructive lens. That would have been much better instead of trying to send her to this reform camp. Um, but, without question, Camila adores Luz, cares greatly for her. And this episode very much proved that, and also kind of proved how admittedly cool Camila can be. So the episode focuses on Luz, Ida, and King putting together a portal door. Although it's it's not a good one. It's still a portal door, but
but it leads into like this kind of halfway dimension where Luz can interact with the human world through the through reflections. Um, and so she um, she makes contact with her doppelganger, who we find out is not bad or nefarious at all, as we kind of assumed based on when we first saw the reveal of fake Luz. Um, the doppelganger is actually a basilisk named V. And, and we've seen basilisks before, uh, like Luz pointed out. So it's cool that this was brought back. Uh, we know basilisks can take on the form of another species. So it, it really works out. Uh, it, it's good continuity. Uh, v has run from the demon realm because she and the other basilisks who are nearly extinct, they're definitely an endangered species, are being used by Belos and the Emperor's Coven for less than good reasons. Um, so V has escaped to the human realm and is just trying to survive, basically. She chose to pretend to be Luz, seeing everything that Luz had gone through. She went through the portal right after Luz basically came in. And Camila took her to the camp. She And then when she came back, she started living with Camila. And she was just trying to survive. And so Luz finding all this out, she wants to help her. And so in order to help her get the magic she needs to keep up her disguise, they start looking for these uh, card decks that Ida left in that realm. This eventually leads them to a historical society where V ends up being caught by the manager there who is a conspiracy theorist trying to hunt demons who he thinks are from Mars. It's really weird, and it's like, yeah, peak conspiracy theorist here. But he traps V and is very clearly not a friend by any means. He is extremely antagonistic. Um, though in his eyes, he's the hero. Like Camila said, all villains think that. All bad people think that they're the hero of their story. Not always true. Um, so, in order to help V, who has resigned herself to her fate, Luz contacts Camila. She tells her everything. And Camila plays along at first and agrees to go to the historical society, but eventually discovers it's all true. And while freaked out at first, she accepts V and helps her and tells her she always has a home with her, which is amazing and beautiful. And I feel so happy for V. Um, she takes out the, the manager of the historical society, locking him in the cage in V's place. And Luz and Camila have a heart to heart that gets really emotional when Luz accidentally lets it out that she chose to stay in the Boiling Isles and Camila wonders and fears if she was the reason for that. If she, if she feels like she might may have pushed Luz away and, and fears about that kind of conclusion. Luz tries to assure her but promises either way that she will come back, that she will make it back. And yeah, like I said, I was wrong. Camila's great. But this is this is the first episode we really truly see that. See, a lot of these people probably had seen the trailers and knew maybe at least a little bit of how Camila was in this episode uh, before. I don't watch the trailers. I, I don't see that stuff. So I, all I knew about Camila was the very few scenes we've seen in her in other episodes. And again, because she didn't handle things right and because I, I projected my own issues onto her because of that, 
I, I saw her as in the wrong and negative and everything. It's really this episode that helped, like, really prove me wrong there. Like, looking back on the other episodes, yeah, it's clear that I was wrong. It's clear that Camila did love Luz and even supported her creativity and weirdness to a degree. But this episode really hammered that in. Like, even the fact that she was, like, just so readily uh, okay with... Uh, just following this when she thought it was just like a game and everything Luz was playing. She's like, okay, okay, I'll play along. And then she goes into that room and she's like, oh, is this, is this an escape room? Oh, is this a LARP? And it's like, oh my God, no, Camila, that, that's not what a LARP is. <laughs> but the same time, it's like, that's actually genuinely cute that she's, she's trying. She's trying to understand. She's taking interest in her daughter's interests. And I wish we had seen more of this before. Even if it was just briefly mentioned, I wish we had seen at least some hint of this side of Camila before, instead of her just kind of coming across as an overbearing, strict parent, who, again, yes, it was shown in those earlier episodes that she did care and, and was supportive, but... I just wish they had shown more of, like, this kind of side to Camila, if, if that makes any sense. Um, with the rest of the stuff of the episode, um, the antagonist, the, the, the manager of that historical society, he makes a great antagonist uh, using the entire conspiracy theory type of character archetype is fun, and it really works. Um, but finding out that he actually had contact with Ida in her owl beast form, while everyone else around uh, the town had met Ida maybe in her regular form, so they didn't think too much of it. Um, but him seeing the owl beast form and everything, like, just one strange occurrence, like, fuels this web of conspiracies, and it's like, yeah, that's, that's about right. <laughs> um, and... and Camila taking him out with the again. I if I'm if I'm wrong about what this is called and if I'm saying it wrong or whatever, please correct me. I I want people to correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's called a chunkla. I I I believe I've heard people talk about it on social media, and I I believe it's been in other uh, media regarding uh, La La Latina mothers and whatnot, um, and even grandmothers and stuff. Um, but it's like people are going to lose their mind over that, or I guess probably already have for those who have already seen it. Um, people are going to lose their mind over it. I thought it was really funny to put in and it's probably legitimately part of the culture. I mean, I don't know. I'm white. So I, I can't like, I can't say, I can't fully chip in on that. So I, I'm asking people if they know, if, if you guys have more knowledge than me regarding this. Please let me know. Um, v is a precious little bean and needs to be protected. Like, seriously, I just, I really quickly fell in love with V. Um, and, and this show definitely does that, where it's like, it makes it really easy to fall in love with these characters. But my god, I, I just, for this character who, when we first saw as this, like this mysterious shadowed uh creepy lose as as a lot of social media call, called her um everyone was thinking oh this has got to be nefarious this has got to be some plan by bellos it, it, and i was thinking grimwalker because of what we saw in that book so since that's not true maybe hunter is the grimwalker um but either way we were all thinking these nefarious things we were all thinking it was something that bellos did or, or or something even maybe worse than that. But no. V is just a basilisk. Um, which is still, again, great continuity. But the fact that she's just genuinely good and nice and precious is just like, cool. I can dig it. <laughs> but then we got some, a, a big bombshell. 
two humans, two brothers, were sent to the demon world, to the Boiling Isles, together. Philip Wittebane was not alone. And now it kind of brings into question, is Bellos Philip or is he his brother? And if he's his brother, where's Philip? And if he's Philip, where is his brother? It, it was previously mentioned that Philip uh, did lose members of his party when exploring the Titan's veins, looking for the Titan's blood. What if that wasn't Philip at that point writing the diary entry? What if it was his brother pretending to be him? Or, there's so many questions. This brings up so many questions. And that's what a good mid-season finale should do. It should, it, it should close off a section of the season, but also hype you up for what's to come. It should give you questions while answering others. This mid-season finale did all of that. And it was good. It was very enjoyable. It was fantastic. So now the question. Uh, that some of you probably are still wondering, what will be replacing this now that we're going on to a hiatus for an indeterminate amount of time? Well, since I don't know how long the hiatus is going to be, we kind of have to play this by ear. This is a donation reward, so we have to con so we ha kind of have to continue with the donation reward slot. So for the time being, we are going to go into Hippo and the Age of Wonder Beasts Season 2. Um, I don't know what we'll do afterwards, if, we'll, if we still need to put something else in the slot, uh, because Owl House would, might not have returned by then. I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. So Kipo will return, or will debut on the 23rd, I think it is, because this next week, uh, as you know, I am taking off. That's why you're seeing this a day earlier than normal. Um, but yeah, I'm taking this next week off, as I mentioned. There's a video on the channel about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Hippo and the Age of Wonder Beast Season 2 will be replacing this for the time being. I have ideas if we need to do anything more after that. But we'll kind of tackle that when we get to it. Um, hopefully, we find out sooner rather than later when the return date will be. That way, we can also plan it out with our schedule. Um, but tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this mid-season finale, Season 2, Episode 10 of The Owl House? Let me know down below, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.